See the safe routes to school people here, although there's no safe routes to school. They did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did tell me that they were coming here, so I would suggest we move on to Paul is here to, to give us an update on the Rail Trail nonprofit. Okay. So we'll we'll uh, Paul we'll, we'll we'll talk about uh, the nonprofit update, and if you could, I think you might be. We're, 
I'll sort of like to get out, out of here before the, before the freezing rain gets to be a quarter of an inch thick outside. So if you could maybe tell us what you had in mind in, in 10 or 15 minutes, that would be great. Oh, I'm, I hope I don't take that long. Okay. Um, my name is Paul Penfield, for those of you who don't know it, and I'll talk half to them and half to you if that's all right. Um, my name is Paul Penfield, and I've been a member of the Rail Trail Advisory Committee as you can see, for, uh, for about three years now, since it was uh, originally formed in 2016. And uh, we've been helping doing the design and the construction of the rail trail uh, during that time, and I think we've been successful in dealing with all the various constituencies. The trail is in and paved almost all the way, and uh, everybody seems to like it people that are trying it. We've dealt uh, with, uh, I think, considerable effectiveness with the abutters in uh, taking into account their desires and wishes. So I think the uh, Real Trail Committee is going to go down in history as a successful committee. But it will go down because at some point the construction is will be done and then you need a different kind of organization. The kind of organization that you want after that uh, is one that ought to be able to be very flexible and nimble in handling what goes on. And as a consequence, uh, a nonprofit, a 501c3 nonprofit, is the right way to go. Almost all rails, rail trails in, uh, in the US and in Canada have their own nonprofits, which raise money. They organize volunteers. They uh, run events. They do minor touch-up, uh, litter pickup dog poop pickup, well, and uh, have volunteers that, that um, let people know when there's uh, branches down on the road and somebody has to come in and get them, or there are unsafe situations, or if there's crumbling of the road, they can be on the spot and identify what goes on. So a bunch of volunteers <laughs> forming a nonprofit is really the right way of doing the, uh, doing the governance of the trail after it's all been built. Now my own action on the uh, rail trail involved both the, uh, I did I think four main things that you may have known about that. One is that I uh, identified and, and advocated for the preservation of historical assets that are on the trail. And those of you who are members of the Western Historical Society have gotten this bulletin and in there half of it uh, which is the result of the work that I did together with, with Phyllis Halpern and with Rick Connard from Wayland. Half of it is a guide to the various historical artifacts that are there. And this has been very popular and we even made a checklist that you can take your kids along and turn it into a scavenger hunt. I've also uh, been effective in, uh, in dealing with the construction and I represented the town on, on tailgate meetings, which were held every week, uh, every Friday morning at 8 o'clock. All the contractors would get together and look over the plans and say, what are we going to do next? And uh, what does this really mean? Because there are ambiguities in there. And I was there to represent the interests of the town and the town residents. Now, they got worked out very well. I uh, also was able to do a decent amount of publicity about the trail. And just recently, this is two weeks ago, my mug is on the front page there. And I've, I've had about five or six articles about the trail. Most of them landed on the front page above the fold, which was great. Uh, my kids said that when I when I got a, my byline above the fold, they said, well, it's just a slow <laughs> news week in Weston. <laughs> Well, every week is a slow news week in the West, so I benefited from that. And, but it's not just a town crier. The Waltham uh, Land Trust has their own uh, Bolton, which way. That, that's another 501c3 organization that deals with trails in, in, uh, in Waltham. And in there, I, I've had this article about some of the historical stuff that's been on our trail. So those are the sort of things that I have been doing. But when I looked around and said, what do we need to do next? 
we got to form a nonprofit to do the actual governance, to do the trail maintenance and pickup, to run events, and to advocate for what we think we need, talk about amenities that we ought to install, raise money to do it. All these things are things that should be done probably by a nonprofit because it's more effective. They can be more nimble than the town can in spending money, and they can get the people who really care about having a picnic table or something to pay for it. Whereas the town, it would, it would bog down town meeting to go through all that kind of stuff. So that's what we want to do. I got together a gang of six, and I'll tell you who they are. Um, I was one of them. Oh, we, uh, we looked around and discovered that the Weston 300 Fund, the, remember five years ago, we had the celebration of the 300th anniversary of Weston. Well, they had a Weston 300 organization, and that organization no longer needs their nonprofit. So we decided that we would repurpose it, and the people who owned it thought the same thing, that, that would be a good idea. So we sort of joined forces with them, and we got a gang of six to actually organize the new thing. I'm one of them. Uh, Joel Angelillo, who you may have heard of, is one of them. Uh, Phyllis Halpern of the Historical Commission is one of them. Uh, who, who else? Uh, oh, uh, Jim Beams is one of them. Uh, Dusty Rhodes, who Oh. Basically, uh, uh, is the best event planner in eastern Massachusetts, by all accounts. Uh, she's a member of that group. And uh, Bill Russo is also a member. He's, he's been involved in several nonprofits and organizations in town. Okay, and our present status is that we have some pro bono attorneys that are working for us. And we're now in the process of of doing the legal changes necessary to actually change our name. Our new name is going to be, the, the name of the old organization was the Legacy, uh, what was it, Legacy Trails of, of Weston 300, something like that. It was, uh, they, they collected money for benches and pavers for the trails, uh, for the Legacy Trail. Then the Legacy Trail got changed in location, in size, and it got delayed, but it's finally been designed and it will actually be, be uh, constructed within a year or so to run from the, the uh, Council on Aging uh, up through the Case Estate plans. And there will be a lot of opportunities to put these benches, but not all the benches. Some of them are going to go on the rail trail or nearby. So we've got uh, already a joint um, organization of uh, task force to design where the uh, where these benches and the pavers are going to go. But we got good cooperation. Uh, right now, the status of our group is that we're going to uh, do the legal stuff. We're going to uh, solicit volunteers to do various things, and I got ideas that I've been thinking of for that. Um, and I come to this group pledging our cooperation and collaboration. And I've been going around to all the various groups in town, both the nonprofits and the uh, government uh, committees, town committees, saying basically we're the new kid in town. We, uh, we want to play nice and we w do want to play. And we have some expertise about what the trail is all about. And we can make it a good asset for the town. We can continue to maintain it. Um, anything that uh, a group of volunteers can do. We want to establish a, a group of volunteers that has the enthusiasm to actually follow through on a lot of stuff. And the way of organizing it is to have such a body and we're going to do it. We want to, uh, we don't want to take over anybody else's job. We don't want to compete for scope of that responsibility for money or for personnel or anything. We want to cooperate, and we want to do things together with other organizations. Um, DCR likes the idea. DCR, by the way, owns the trail. The town doesn't own anything. And therefore, everything that we do, we have to clear with DCR. Well, I think we can establish a good relationship with DCR. We have one right now, and, uh, and 
we intend to keep it, and as a result, we will know what's possible to do and what's not possible, and we will implement to the best way that we can the regulations and the rules of the trail, and uh, be a spot within town, be an organization which people can turn to if they want to use the trail for some event. If the middle school wants to run a, a 5K race, fine, we'll just get out the traffic cones, put them down, use half the road, and let the other half be for multiple use. We can do it much easier than the police department can. And uh, another thing that, that we can do, I don't know how many of you have a relative that's in a wheelchair, but if you do, they know, you know that it's very difficult to get out. Our entire trail will be accessible to wheelchairs. So uh, I want to get the uh, people who have an interest in that to organize an event where the wheelchairs are themselves are looking at and the people riding them. The uh, wheelchairs on parade. And then we can, uh, we can let the people off there. They'll, have, they'll be able to come down the trail and come around the curb and then we'll have a table with the lemonade and the cookies. And we'll have a prize for the wheelchair that has the most grandchildren. We got, we got some great ideas that are going to uh, resonate, I think, with residents very well. So I come to ask your sympathy and cooperation, and if you guys have something that you want to do on the trail or have something about the trail that you want to talk about, um, after the Rail Trail Advisory Committee is through with its job, then you'll have to deal with us. And we'll, we'll play as best we can. What's the name of the group? Oh, the, uh, we finally voted the name. <laughs> that, that was a contentious issue. The name is the Legacy Rail Trail of Weston. And if you want to pronounce it, it can be Lurtau. Or Lurtau. <laughs> but if you don't want to pronounce it, then, then you're okay. Uh, it, was, it was felt that we would take over the responsibility of the uh, Weston 300 in deploying the benches and the, and the pavers. Because that's something, that's a contract that was made by that organization with the residents of the town that it ought to be fulfilled. We are in the process of, do, of starting that, and uh, we're going to do it on the new legacy trail when it actually gets built, and we've been talking to the designers of that, and so on. And so we want the name Legacy in there to reflect that, but also to reflect the fact that even the rail trail itself is a legacy that's given us, and we should be preserving for, uh, for future residents. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, um, who's going to be responsible for maintaining the trail, and where's the money coming from to do that? Are, are, you, are you asking as a question of law or as a question of practice? Well, <laughs> by, uh, by law, it's <coughs> the, the, the land of the trail is owned by MBTA, by the state, and DCR is paying for the entire construction of the trail itself. Um, and, they have promised that they will mow the, uh, the shoulders. Ever sort, ever the shoulders sort. have to be mowed. And they have promised to do that. Every other town I've talked to where that promise has been made said, well, when it finally comes down to it, they don't show up because they got too much else on their plate. So as a practical matter, I think that our committee uh, will probably decide something as simple as that and we'll figure out a way of doing it, maybe in collaboration with the Forest and Trail Association. Uh, now, as far as main, maintaining uh, when, you, when you get actual potholes and that sort of thing, uh, that's something that DCR is, um, is supposed to do, and if you keep at them enough, they actually uh, do do that. Things that actually came up through one of the committees. You sure you visited the new sustainable committee? Oh yes, I talked to them the other day. Good. And one of, let me just go on for a second. One of the things we were talking because I'm on I'm the liaison point to that committee from the, from the planning board. And one of the things that came up was the pesticides and herbicides that the power companies use along that stretch. And we were wondering how that worked with the rail trail. So I think there's a, an interesting conversation to be had. I, 
I think there is, we haven't had that conversation right. yet. Uh, we, we certainly can. Uh, I've, I've seen the, the workmen out there, and I haven't seen them actually apply anything. They, they uh, bring out their saws and they cut things. They have to do that. Yeah. I know there is a vegetative management program which is submitted to the CONCOM, and that goes through, and that's how they do it. But I think it would be a helpful thing if the new rail trail committee and the legacy uh, trail committee and the sustainable committee just take a peek at what's going on. Excellent idea. What I thought you were going to say is that, is that SWAG and the sustainability committee are doing the, how shall I say, second annual uh, townwide cleanup in April uh, for a whole week, and they're encouraging neighborhoods to get together to pick up the letter in the springtime uh, after all the snow is melted uh, in their neighborhood, and uh, they're making arrangements to have a place to take it and so on. And I said, well, how, how about the rail trail? Shouldn't that also be picked up? And I said, yes. And guess who got ended up with that? So we're just, so we're, we're going to do some of that, and we're going to try to take the opportunity to remove some of the accumulated stuff in the cattle passes. If you take a look in the cattle passes, you'll find out people have used it as a garbage truck. There's, there's old tires in there, for example. And I think that that might be a good time to get some Boy Scouts or some volunteers from, from middle school or high school to come out and actually uh, do some cleanups of it. We hope to do that in April. That's good. That's good. I have a question about the depot on your shirt. Are there any plans to restore <laughs> the depot? Yeah, what about the church a headquarters building? <laughs> or at the very least, to replace the roof? Yeah. Since there's a tarp the on it right now. The, uh, the depot is in private ownership. Yeah. And that's all I can say about it. There, there is another section of, of the trail which has not yet been designed, and that's a tenth of a mile between um, the eastern end and the Waltham border. There's a tenth of a mile there, and that's the place where it goes, it passes over Stony Brook, where there's a historic bridge that nobody can see. And then it passes over the uh, Pittsburgh line with, on a, with uh, trains on their way to Kendall Green and West. Uh, that still has to be designed, and the role that our committee plays and the role that DCR plays is still subject to <coughs> negotiation. And it's also the case that people have looked at that trestle bridge and said this would be a wonderful way, wonderful way of accomplishing some other objective. And think of the driveway for the 40B as the latest example of that. And uh, I. Uh, I'm very interested in the fact that the 40B project seems to be leading in the direction of uh, access off of Route 20 rather than across from Jones Road. And that would be very good for, for the town, I think, because the rail trail could continue across the bridge just as the uh, tracks originally did. And the bridge itself, of course, is a historical structure. It, was, uh, it dates back to 1896. And I could tell you more about that than you want to know, but I won't. Are there any questions or comments from anyone in the audience about what Paul has to say? Or I, I was just going to, um, Diana Chaplin, I was just going to clarify that the name of the trail that you were asking after is called the Weston 300 Legacy Trail Trust Incorporated, in case you were curious. Well, that's, that's the old name. Yeah, that was, um, you had given it, you did, weren't sure of it, but that is it. Well, that is still the name because we're still in the legal process of changing ownership. To, to change the ownership, they have to get the current directors, of which there are three of them, the current officers, to agree to step down and they will appoint new officers and then those new officers will have the legal power to change the name and to do things. And the, uh, one of the three people who's currently an officer will continue as an officer of the new group and wants to work on the rail trail. I think this is just great. The, the other thing I just should say, I've been going around to a lot of committees, and uh, I, I'm bearing in mind that there are really four major things that people will do on the, on 
on the rail trail. One, one is recreation, one is fitness and health, getting out, exercising, and so forth. Um, one, one is transportation, if you actually want to end up in Wayland to get your ice cream and on your way back. So it's recreation, transportation, and fitness, and then education, because the historical artifacts ought to be restored and, and uh, adequate presentations made of them. We're, we uh, are planning on that being a mission of our uh, new organization. So I've been going around and talking to all the town bodies that have anything to do with any of those, and it's a long list, and I'm about halfway through, I guess. Well, I think the town is going to owe your taking on the responsibility of sort of managing the, the trail and you know keeping it active and it sounds like a, a, a great plan. Thank you. I and I hope that the, looking back in history that's what people will, will say. Otherwise you get rotten potatoes on that. I'm expecting that anyway. Yeah. I'm expecting some of that. But the, the work of the Rail Trail Advisory Committee, which was to oversee the construction and the design <coughs> of it, and the work of actually running it are two things, and we're having a gradual uh, uh, handoff between one organization and the other. And I think we've got a lot of goodwill going with us. I want to establish goodwill with all the other town organizations, including the Latin Board, of course. Well, we look forward to working with you. Great. Thanks, Paul. Thank uh, Sue, Sue has a question. Yeah. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> Sue is a, a tiny person. A tiny in person in the corner, yes. Hi, Sue. So. <laughs> They, they 
should know that, and I think they do. There is, I should say, a police patrol right now. There's uh, one officer and one motorcycle, and who's uh, the officer is trained for motorcycle use, and there's one motorcycle, and I've seen him on the trail. Uh, he goes down there every few days. Uh, not that that's going to actually be any pr police presence, which keeps bad things from happening. But the police are aware of this, and we're gradually putting into place the, uh, the details that we want. Um, one last thing. So when you are, so they are aware of it, when you're putting in the details, are you going to be, I mean, I assume you're going to have meetings with them, um, the police department, to see what they see their role as. Yes, this, this is a job which the uh, Rail Trail Advisory Committee is uh, beginning to, to do. We're, we're starting with the animal control officer. Great. Yeah. Um, because that's that's the place where it will show up most naturally. Exactly. Pe people sometimes worry about about uh, people riding their bikes and then coming in your back door, stealing your television, and then riding their bikes back to wherever. Uh, I mean, that that's just a uh, a vision that has no no reality to it. If people want to rob your house, what they're going to do is go into your front door because they can they can uh, get there by a road. They don't have to go. <laughs> Yes, horses are allowed. However, it's, it's more inconvenient in an odd sort of a way. Uh, the, uh, the, the equestrian use in the western end is quite strong. There are people in, in Wayland who uh, have come and used the trail before the, the, it, was, it was paved to uh, get to the western town forest and especially be able to get up to the Dixon uh, horse ring. Um, that's a little bit more difficult now because the uh, safety fences that have been put up, um, they have long bolts in them, and because they're long bolts, they scratch the side of the horse. The horse, you'd think, would come right up against the, the uh, fence, but no, the bolts protrude. So now there's a motion that people are going to go and get sawzalls and cut off the end of the bolts. It, it's gotten to this level, uh, but so there are enough horsey people in, in Wayland and Weston that uh, they're going to find their way through, and there is room and space for them to do that. Uh, and they found their own path earlier, and now it's a little more difficult, but they still will. And horses are allowed. Yes, that was, that was your question. Any more questions for uh, Paul? <laughs> okay, Paul, thank you very much. Well, thank you all. <laughs> is there anything we can do to help your committee as a, as a board? Okay. Well, but just uh, my question was is there anything that we can do as a committee to help your board? Um, you know, when there is, you'll hear from us. Fair enough. I, I do have a a write-up of a statement I made at the Open Space and Recreation Forum about the group, and I'll be happy to give you enough copies to, to uh, read it into the record in some okay. sense. Great, thank you. thank you. And if any of the audience would like a copy, I have a few spares. Great, Paul. Thanks again. Well, thank, thank you, you all. all. Right. Thanks, Paul. Great. Is, um, I, I know. It's all right. I, I can do it. She's dying as motion. This is somebody here from the Safe Routes to School yeah. presentation. Yeah. So we are here. Oh, okay. Apologies for being late. That's all right. No problem. Uh, who's, who is, are you making a presentation? Uh, yes. All right. Uh, please uh, go ahead. Um, 
Are you going to be showing something on the screen here? Uh, yeah. yeah. Alright, so we'll, we'll, we'll move the There you go. You want yours? Yeah. <laughs> This is Samantha Gold. Uh, we're with the Safe Routes to School Massachusetts program. Um, Safe Routes to School Massachusetts is a free program for middle school and elementary schools throughout the state. Um, we're one of the few statewide Safe Routes to School programs. These occasionally exist at the county or even city level. Um, we serve all, 100, all 350 towns in Massachusetts. Um, so you can see some of our activity. Um, it's plotted in the places that you would expect, clustered around where there are lots of schools and where schools are the most walkable. Um, our mission statement is to make it uh, safe to walk where it is not and to encourage walking and biking uh, where it is. Um, so I'll let Samantha run through the five E's, which are the foundation of our program. Um, sorry, excuse me, six E's. Um, we added the sixth E, which is equity, uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, now, most of the E's have actual program elements. For instance, for education, we have things like pedestrian and bike safety programs. Um, equity is an E that kind of innervates all the other E's. So it exists at almost every level of everything we do. We try to have an equity component to it. I'll let Sam walk you through the E5, 6 E's. Hi, thanks. So our first E, um, as you said, is education. We have pedestrian and bicycle safeties. Um, we go in class and meet with the students in their class. Um, there's different forms of pedestrian safety. We can either do a lesson just to, say, second graders, or we can also do a mentor lesson where we would train the trainers. So we could train middle schoolers to teach the younger students and that way both grades learn more about pedestrian safety. Um, and then we also have bicycle safety. Um, bike rodeos are on-bike programs, so we'll set up obstacle courses outside with um, the uh, mass bike. They're the statewide trainers. Um, they'll come out to that. Sometimes we get the police involved. It's a lot of fun. Um, we also have middle school programs. These include um, curriculum that we can give to teachers to Our pedestrian safety also meets um, the standards for physical education in Massachusetts. So we have downloadable resources for PE teachers if they want to do pedestrian safety on their own instead of having us come into the school. We encourage them to kind of be sustainable without us. Um, but we are also available if we want to take over for a gym teacher is typically how we do it. We just do one class at a time and we replace phys ed. There's good enough physical activity folded right in. Next is encouragement. We actually had our winter walk to school day this morning. Um, so a lot of schools participated in that. I think we have about 90 schools signed up today. Um, then there's other ways to include walking, such as you can choose a day, such as Walking Wednesday, for the students to walk to school every week just to get that cycle going. Um, then we also promote walking school buses. This is where students gather at a location and walk to school together, usually accompanied, accompanied by a parent or a guardian. And then we also have a Walk Across America interactive poster where students can figure out um, how many miles they're walking and then find out how many miles that would take them across America. So it's kind of an activity. The next E is enforcement. Um, including the local police department and a lot of our events is a great way to get the kids motivated, um, have role models to look up to. Sometimes they'll come out to the bike rodeos and the helmet giveaways. And they're also there to train our crossing guards. Um, as if you check out our crossing guard reference guide and video, um, you'll see a lot of local police uh, officials. Um, next E is evaluation. We have um, walking assessments where we'll gather a group of um, safe routes uh, committee, parents, principals, um, and we'll get we'll go on a two mile radius around the school figure out the best walking paths and the safest paths for students to get to school. We also find more information about that with our parent survey. Um, this is a 
available in nine different languages. It takes about two minutes for parents to fill it out. Um, we gain information like where the students are coming from, um, how many students are walking and biking, and um, this helps us determine safer routes to get to school. Uh, one other thing, uh, just to jump in, that's not on this slide, which is a little uh, old, um, is arrival dismissal assessments. Um, so these differ from walk <coughs> assessments in a few key ways. Walk assessments are really designed to select a route for, say, your flagship day participation um, or your walking school bus. Um, whereas an arrival dismissal is really more about the processes that the school undertake. If we think that they should implement a hang tag system where the parents display an actual large number in the window and kids are called accordingly, we can recommend that. Um, most of our recommendations from arrival dismissal assessments center around increasing walking and biking. Um, this is something we usually have to be very explicit about. Um, it's the big pain point for schools, the arrival dismissal, and the most painful part is the motor vehicle congestion. Um, since we are CMAC funded, uh, we are not allowed to make cars flow any better. Um, so a lot of times we have to be very specific when we speak to parents about how if you drive your child to school, you will probably have a similar experience, even though you might have to park somewhere different, take a different route, go a different entrance. Um, most of our recommendations center around driving kids less and walking and biking more. What is CMAC? Uh, congestion mitigation and air quality. This is a federal funding mechanism that makes safer to school possible. So if we were to, um, say, increase capacity for motor vehicles at a school, um, we would be not yes. serving the best interest of that, uh, that funding mechanism. Thank you. Um, this is just an example of the reports we get after parents take the survey. Um, we also get a map that shows um, different walk sheds. For example, it could be like a five minute walk shed, it'll take five minutes for kids to get to school, or a 10 minute walk shed. Um, you can see the dots are where students are coming from, so we can really figure out the best ways for them to get to school. I believe yellow is driving, blue is walking, um, sorry, yellow is bus, uh, red is driving, uh, blue is walk or bike, and green is car. Yes. Um, so, do you mean uh, design guidelines or design application? Design guidelines, guidelines. etc. Yes. So the so the engineering program um, <laughs> essentially Safer to School has a small pot of money that schools can apply for. Um, typically, the funding is around a million dollars for a Safer to School project that gets you about a mile and a half of sidewalk. Um, your project is much more likely to be funded if it currently exists in a <coughs> planning document somewhere. Um, now that could be as simple as a you know 40 year plan that says we want to improve walking and biking in our town but the more designed and the more kind of complete that is the more likely MassDOT is going to be to select that project to fund um, there have historically been about five projects a year um, completed about 55 schools applied this round um, and the as uh, Sam mentioned, the application period closed on January 11th, so we're about a full year out from the next application period. But even for schools that don't receive funding from us, the exercise is very useful for them. Um, there's about a 35-page document that takes you through step-by-step -step the application process. It's all online, um, but you will need a MAPIT account. MAPIT is the Massachusetts uh, Project Intake Tool, um, where you actually submit all your paperwork, submit supporting documents, submit any photos, uh, letters of support from the community. Um, but it's, it's useful to start thinking about it even now for next year's uh, because it's a pretty in-depth process. Um, but these are the sorts of projects that usually come out of it. Um, now, we, that funding does uh, go towards design uh, as well. Uh, but we don't have specific design guidelines within Safe Roots. We kind of defer to town planners uh, and the firm that does the design if you are to win an award is uh, AECOM. Okay. 
Okay. It's a two big engineering firm. Yes, and they, they, they are the ones who will do the work? Yes. Okay. They're design build. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Every school in Weston is partnered with us officially. Um, all it takes to partner with us is a signature on a form. Um, the challenge that we face typically is that school administrative uh, staff turns over rather quickly. Um, so even though every school in Weston is officially a Safe Routes to School partner, um, we occasionally go into schools that we're partnered with and they say, we've never heard of you. Um, two of the schools are active. Uh, we have about 800 schools. I'll pretend to know off the top of my head um, that field, and um, Woodland are the two more active ones. They participate in the flagship days, they do the pedestrian safety lessons, um, but the other two, um, Country and Middle, are not active, um, even though they are officially partnered. Um, so what we <coughs> seek from uh, a, planning, a planning board or a municipal body is essentially a connection to the superintendent, um, who can connect us then to principals. Uh, and when it kind of comes from above like that, the buy-in is kind of built in. Um, the other way that we do it is we go to the parents first and kind of go bottom up, um, but both work. Um, so that is our only ask for today, is that we be connected to uh, a superintendent who can uh, get us into the schools and we can kind of pluck some of these low-hanging fruit items. Um, these are all very light lifts for the school, but very beneficial. Well, the school committee is represented here tonight. Mm -hmm. Ah, wonderful. Daniel, hi. Hey, this thanks. is Daniel Black. Hi, thanks hi. for having me. Sorry I was late, I was at another that's all right, so yeah. we started late okay. anyway. Yeah. Um, so maybe you're the, the contact person. Yeah, happy um, to, to be. Yeah. yeah. So for sure, thank you. If anyone has any questions, uh, Sam's contact info. Sam will be your point of contact for all things safe, all things safe routes. Um, and we have uh, business cards here so you guys can reach out with any questions. Have you done any surveys of any? Not within the past two years. Um, we usually do a survey about every every two years or so, just so we don't do the same kids over and over. We kind of want to let the, the student body turn over a little bit. Right, right. <laughs> we have some history of surveys. Yeah. Um, so I could contact you and maybe get a copy of Yes, um, it would be over two years old, so it might not represent okay. the, the current I student body. I kind of want to see what the survey looks like. In okay. Real life, yeah. um, so there was. Um, that the uh, the map with the walk sheds, the, the five minute, 10 minute is a big piece of it. And then the um, the other thing that it does is compares your school to the rest of the state. Um, so it's all compiled by NAPC, the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission. And they hold all the data on what streets are where. And so you get a nice kind of snapshot of where you rank relative to other parts of Massachusetts. Any, uh, statistics on how many kids walk to school, how many kids bike to school, and how much the program is helping? Nationally? Or, uh, or it's a mass DOT thing. So, so in Massachusetts, um, we're a little bit more walkable than the rest of the country. The, the, the U.S. stats are the ones that I know off the top of my head. Uh, compared to 1970, uh, about 50% of kids walk to school. Now we are about 12%. 12% um, of kids walk to school in Massachusetts. Yeah. We're, we're a little better. I, I would say I would estimate that it's more close to 15, maybe, yeah. maybe a little shade above. But and how many bike? Um, biking is uh, less than one percent. Well, yeah, so that that follows the typical kind of mode share of yeah. adults in that like less than one percent. If you change people. behavior and add some services, you know, realistically, what could it go up to? Um, that's 
largely context dependent. Um, what, I, what we have seen in one of the stats that the National Center talks about a lot, uh, because people tend to zero in on engineering, they think, well, there's just no sidewalks here, there's just yeah. no white lanes here. Um, engineering on its own, uh, we see a around 18% increase in walkers and bikers. Um, the other four E's, in the absence of engineering, we see 21% increase. So the other four so E's- is like 40% increase there. Uh, when, when combined, something like 30%. Yeah. Okay, so you can go from 12% uh, so those are percent increases. Oh, I understand. Um, I got yeah. it. So okay. if I did kind of that math, it would be yeah. up to 18. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yep. That's worth it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you ascribe the decline in the percentage of kids going walking and biking to school to, to, to some <laughs> cause, or is it? It must be a cluster of causes. Yeah. Um, Cheap oil is kind of what I blame for everything. Um, <laughs> cheap, cheap oil, land, land development patterns, um, the same reason everyone kind of drives. Um, the reason we're funded by CMAC is because they consider this a congestion problem uh, as much as anything else. Yeah. Uh, one third of all uh, rush hour trips make a school run at some point. Um, so it's a big part of congestion in general. Um, so it's, you know, all, the, all those kind of bigger picture factors. Well, a little bit of help is a lot of help. Yeah. You know, you can, you know, it's 10% of it, that's a big plus. Yeah, exactly. So. Great. Any comments from anyone of the audience? Anyone? Yes, Paul. Let me just say that I'm, uh, I regret to say that our new rail trail was nowhere near the high school. <coughs> high school. So it, it, it can't help your very, uh, Laudable uh, activity. Does it go to, near any of the other schools? We're actually only scoped to work with middle and elementary, so we wouldn't be able to work with the high school specifically unless maybe they're all clustered close to each other. Well, there, there is a cluster, and it's closer than the high school is, but it still uh, has barriers between the rail trail and, and the schools themselves, and, and that would have to be taken into account somehow. Right. And also, uh, there aren't a large number of uh, houses that, that, that are close enough to the rail trail that kids could walk to it and then get on the rail trail and then get off somewhere close to the, the school. We should think about that, though. Mm -hmm. and, and, but I did see that a lot of your examples use trails uh, in the photographs, and I can understand why, because they're inherently safe, uh, safe environments. Uh, if there is an interest in Weston, in, um, in implementing some of the training, so you had a training session for uh, bike, bicycle inspection, I think, something of, of that nature. Yep. Uh, the rail trail would be perfect for that. We would be happy to uh, have somebody in town organize and use use the safe environment of the rail trail to actually do that. Uh, one of your events? That would be great, yeah. Our, be our, bike, our bike rodeos typically require something right. like uh, a parking lot to be cleared. Uh, police are uh, common hosts of that sort of thing because um, they can kind of corral cars and you know forbid them from an area and say, here's your bike rodeo space. Um, I've never done a bike rodeo on a, on a trail. A lot of the obstacle courses just geometrically are, are large, um, but it certainly could work. We can work almost in any context. Um, what I'm thinking about that could be even better is a bike train. A bike train is the bike version of a walking school bus. It's a group of kids that bike together. It's one of the safer ways to ride is in a group like that. Um, it takes a little bit more dedicated of a parent chaperone, and you have less than 1% of the population um, to draw from for that chaperone, since so few people bike. Um, but those are the common uses of, of rail trails and trails in general for the safest program is, um, is bike trains. Yeah, um, we will engage with them, especially around the funding, the engineering funding mechanisms. Yeah. Now, the projects that I mentioned and the funding uh, grant that I mentioned um, are just kind of the bigger one we have. Sam mentioned briefly the signs and lines application. That's like a ten thousand dollar project. If you just want, you know, a few new, you know, school zone signs, not rapid flash or anything <laughs> like that and just need to upgrade a few crosswalks. Um, we did that in Lawrence. We upgraded about 14 crosswalks um, for less than 10 grand. Um, that is intended to be a little bit more of an agile, smaller scale funding mechanism that is less competitive than our you know, 55 people apply and five receive type um, grant. 
but it is not open yet, um, but Sam will let you know as soon as that application is, is open as well. There's no group in Massachusetts called Safe Routes to Trains. There's not. Safe Routes to Parks is the only other Safe Routes offshoot that has sprung up recently. Um, I believe that's a project of the National Center for Safe Routes to School. We don't have much of a connection with them. Most people <clears throat> think of, in a town like Weston, most people think of the roof as, as, as being related to the street layout. Mm -hmm. So that it's a sidewalk next to a road. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things that um, the, the CONCOM has talked to me about recently is trying to knit together the town's non-street related trail network so that so that we can actually get from one part of town to the other part of town without actually network. having to parallel the part of the, the traffic stream. Um, and there and there's and there's some missing links that um, that the planning board might be useful in developing when we're looking at uh, site plan review on certain proposed projects or on flexible subdivisions. So I, something we might keep in mind because it's an alternative to going on a sidewalk yeah. next to a busy road. Right. Just then, you know. Yeah, Al, if I, I, commit, I <coughs> think that's a great idea because one of the great things, as you know, is that we have cluster schools that are not in neighborhoods. And the, right. the three elementary schools back up town land or a cemetery. There's not a lot of neighbors. Right. And then, you know, when you think that the population town is only 30 percent using you know school age children there's not a lot of houses near the elementary school that then have school age children because they abut all kinds of whether it be the cemetery or case estates or, or town land so taking sidewalks or roads to get there is a real you know roundabout way to get there so right. i think so anything cemeteries are a common route for uh, walking school buses it's Right. Takes them getting used to, but right. they're very safe. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anything that would kind of tie in some of these trails would be welcome for sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, any other questions, comments? Good. Then, then I think you need to talk with Danielle and uh, get to the, the school superintendent, and that sounds like the next step. Wonderful. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we can talk about that a little bit later as well. 
well. What limitations did you put on to the, to the limit, which have been met? Right. Um, I live in the as built. On the left of the property, excuse me. Um, they have an existing driveway, but then they also put a, a permeable parking area, basically, um, which is an added addition. Um, we have actually talked to Dave Conway. He approved the stormwater calculations on that. Concom also approved it. Um, it just needs to be approved by us as well. We can show pictures of that as we go through the process as well. Can, can somebody just enumerate the things that we identified at the hearing before? And, and I, I, I think the gravel parking area was we didn't was one of the things, yeah. Was it one of the things? Uh, also, the parking, this, had, this parking area can, was. Can, can we back up for a second? Yes. There, was a, there was a neighbor who was very displeased yeah, here, about yeah. all the things that had been done. He was supposed to make a list. He's here. He did. Okay, that's great. So I guess the question is, if he's done that list, mm -hmm. have they... Is what they've done conforming to his list? Are they going to undo it? Are they going to rectify it? Are we going to just let him get away? You know, get away with oh, yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, I don't understand this. Yeah, I mean, we have our own list, and I'm, if you have any more questions about, you know, where we are in the process of if you're still missing um, up to their plans, you can explain that. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, uh, let's is, let's <coughs> go through this in a systematic way. Oh, okay. well, what was it that we were that we so first thing first? We'll go here. back to the landscape plan. Okay. Um, their yard is not the replicant of this. What does that mean? It doesn't, it's not, we're missing a lot of bushes, these aren't lined up properly. So they're sure. missing a lot of Wait a minute, plants. your hand is moving everywhere. But when these aren't uh, located properly, what, what is it located properly? They move to sit farther back when you're always right in front of it, everything looks. Exactly. We're in the first row of movie theater without, without the popcorn. So for an example of the plan, um, you know, there's a mix of plantings here, kind of jagged through the front yard. Yeah. You go here, it's the same species lined up. And then there's a lot of also we were concerned about the sunroom. Um, the neighbor's property need to be shielded with right. um, some buffers so that there. needs to be planted as well. Yeah, there were some trees that were taken down and in the back that shouldn't have been. Yeah. And there were also spotlights that shouldn't have been. Yeah, they replaced those. And there's I have the pictures bigger, here. There are bigger paths and permeable surfaces that they should be. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why we're here today. We're here to talk about the permeable surfaces, discuss the landscape estimate that they have had, and then... Well, the permeable surface, if I'm looking at the previous slide, took the place of a number of plantings to the, to the left of the driveway, did yeah. it not? Yeah, some of these rhododendrons would be in the place of that permeable surface. And then the, 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 there looked like there were a couple of existing trees there that were supposed to remain. I don't know if they're, if they're still there or not still there. Mm -hmm. Are they, do you know? You know, I'm looking at the two, the big circle and the smaller circle. Yeah, they should be. I mean, they should be? Much, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. they should be. And then the, 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 there was a fence that was going to go in. Yeah. Okay. Is the fence in? It's not in, but they have a wood fence they're planning to go in. They're planning to put a fence in. Okay. So, and the, then there was a, sh a shed that turned out to be not, I guess that's gone now. That that, that shed was, was demolished at some point. Yeah. Or, so, it, it, it's what's happening with that? Is there, is there a new shed going in that location or no shed? I mean, I'm sure the the applicants can speak to that. This is yeah. you know, their property. They know exactly what's going. What's not going. Just trying to remember what it are. was that we were yeah. missing. The, the is there is round. there anything else on the on the yeah. neighbor's list that we haven't mentioned? Because he lives right next. Yeah, room. I mean, is there anything else that we need? Mm -hmm. There's the irrigation system that's going on without yeah. yeah. approval or a well yeah. there. Um, let's see. There was the concern about the consistent. Um, outside of construction time, working hours, excavator on the weekends, uh, evenings, consistently doing work outside hammering with um, saw, tile saws. I called the police probably half a dozen times on them and they just continue to ignore. Is that continued since the hearing in November? They haven't done any work since the hearing in November because it's in the winter time now. I just look at it's there's a blue tarp out in the back there. There's construction debris around the property. Um, also, the COA was issued without when it potentially shouldn't have been, if I recall, as part of the last discussion. 
Yeah, so actually the COA, the building inspector has the authority to issue a COA. If he does an inspection on the house, he, you know, views it as basically not a, like a safety concern. But a permanent CO is basically what you guys need to, you know, issue. When you say COA, I think you mean COA. 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 Yes, yeah. 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 So they, they're fine to live in the house for 180 days at John. It's fine for when did that start? In November? Yes, September. Is there a sunset date on, this, on the January Right, but I'm wondering when I, the temperature Yeah, I talked to John maybe two weeks ago. He said it was about two months at the process. So there can be like 90 days out of right now. <laughs> okay. okay, but there is a sunset date on the temporary CMO? Yeah, and they can also issue another one. So it's not just, Oh, okay. Yeah. So we can keep issuing. We can keep going as long as we want. Yeah. yeah. Um, Right, but they can't. They can't get a final until we sign off. Yeah, the slaughter room they need our approval for that. Yeah. And when and when this final board reviewed this and gave a permit, was it to this owner or a different owner? Was it sold in the in between? It was to this owner. It was to this owner. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So that's is that have we touched all the bases? The patio was also a part of as well. Yeah, but during one of the initial, 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 initial meetings, the patio was asked to be scaled down considerably. They, um, in the, the letter submitted, said they were out of the country, and the builder took it upon himself to enlarge the patio and put in a fire pit, uh, which uh, I find it hard to believe that any builder would just, out of the kindness of his heart, uh, just build a 50% larger patio without some sort of guidance from the homeowner. And when you're ready, I'm, I'm trying to help the family working with the town. So when you're ready for me to explain, there's a lot of things I can explain to you when, when you're ready because sure. of the language barrier. So I helped sure. with conservation and I've been um, working with the planner to make things to go through the checklist with them. All right. So whenever you're ready, I can explain a lot of things. Very good. And, and could you just give us your name? Please? Carol Gilbert, 37 School Street. Okay. Well, good. So you were going to describe what you have done since the hearing so I, I, I represent the sunroom company that is looking to install the sunroom on the existing base that's there right now that's it that's it oh well in that, that case then we need to talk to you sure so okay i would think it would be better and, and your okay. background excuse me your background is what you're an architect you're a landscaper you are i am a western resident and okay. i am a lawyer and i am the next door neighbor to their friend so i was brought into the Okay. system as number one if I could be um, help with the language barrier mm -hmm. and Do you also, speak the language? No. Okay. They, they have a translator that if you don't mind if they'll say something. No, Sometimes they understand. So what I've been doing is going to the town planner. And the first thing I did was when I heard there was a problem, mm -hmm. I went down there and I met with them and I said, what are the things that we need to do? And so one of them, there were two meetings coming up. One was conservation and one was this meeting. Mm -hmm. So I wrote down the three things, and I usually email, but I've met with them in person as well. The first thing was the stormwater um, engineering plan had to be done, and that was done. But then there was an issue of another, um, the runoff. No. Yeah, and that, number one, was checked off. So we, we completed that. My understanding was there were three things for this meeting. And number two, was the lighting. The folks had to take down some spotlights. They had installed some lights, on, two on the back of the house. I have pictures, but you know what they are. You've already, yeah, and then two on the front too. of the house. They were not, which I had never heard of this term, yeah, dark sky right. compliant, but now I know. So the, the folks purchased those lights. They thought that they weren't quite sure how to go about it, but I, I confirmed with the town. They purchased them. They sent them the information regarding what type of lights were purchased. They got them, and then I also told them that per the town, they didn't want them just to have them, they wanted them installed. And they wanted the old lights taken down. So they are installed now. And the old ones are taken down? Yes, the spotlights on the side of the garage are taken down. Two in the back, two in the front, and pictures have been there. Good sure enough, yes. Sent that are installed. Christmas lights, I think. Is that what those are? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. It's hard to get quick. Yeah, it's, 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 
sideways and you're within two feet. Getting Yeah, so it kind of just looks like this. It's probably better. Is that dark sky? Yeah, it's dark sky. There's a description of them in patch before they purchase them, right? Dark sky complaint. Yeah. And they put in those to pick them on out, so Where's the okay. Do you know where the fixture is in the, in the, um, in the light houses? That one would happen? No, 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 no. Where no, is no, the fall actually in the side. housing? <coughs> Where is it? I believe it's on the very top of it. Right there. up in the air? Yeah. So that's all our fixtures. Yeah. What else? They're not all fixed, though. There's still some other that are still unshielded lights in the side of the house. They're, are they not all done? Correct. No, the, according to the town, which is what I have been dealing with, is the town, because that's what they have to deal with as far as, I mean, their compliance. So I checked with the town, and the two in the back and the two in the front had to be replaced, mm -hmm. and the spotlights were down. That's what I was told. Yeah, we made sure that all the lights that were up, that weren't dark skin compliant, were down. So for the purpose. So these are put up, I believe the full lights were taken out. I don't know if there's something replacing them. So has more. something been put up since then that was not dark sky compliant? Nothing up there on the outside yeah. of the property should be dark. Not the dark driveway dark. lights are not. They're unshielded bulbs. There are some unshielded bulbs. All right, so I'm going to walk out the car tonight. Okay. Every, oh. every fixture, exterior fixture, on the property should be dark sky. Compliant. I was told by the town exactly what yeah. I needed to have done, and that's why I met right. with the town. Right, but the initial, yeah, but things keep, the initial so, permit. This has been the history with this, and things sort of happen. And the initial yeah. permit was very clear about what had to be done. Yeah, I haven't done a site visit since maybe late December, so I haven't seen the actual house and stuff. Yeah. So you have not been. I mean, I went to Sioux actually. That was the last time I was there, probably. So what that when was that? December on some college. So it was after the November yeah. meeting. Yeah. That was our scheduled site visit. Might be worth just checking yeah. because they may have yeah. sprouted some new fixtures. We have a picture of the lights on the side, and if I when I looked at them, the fix the bulb is up in the housing. Sounds we like the, but <laughs> we're talking about the fixtures that are not attached to the building, you might. Hmm. Okay. There's a, apparently, we've we sprouted some driveway lights. The front lights have been fixed. They they do look different. Whether they're dark side compliant, I don't know. They're absolutely different. The ones in the side of the house, which are facing <coughs> our house, are absolutely not. They are just a frosty glass enclosure with a bright light bulb that is very clearly there. The plans originally showed two fixtures. There are three installed. They did get rid of the floodlights, though, which was a very nice thing to get rid of because that was a delight to have on all the time. So we need to sign off on that. Current sign off, not one from two months ago. Yeah. The other thing that, that concerns me is the drain of the impervious surface right next to the owner, next to the neighbor. Yeah. Because I, again, I wasn't here when the planning board did that, but I assume the neighbor looked at it and said, "Oh, there's so much buffer between me and B, and I see that buffer going away now." Well, I'm, not sure. it's, I'm not sure it's and back. That, that's could all you go back to the, the, could back to the picture of the, um, I'm sorry, two people in one. Right. You want the plan or the actual? I, I wasn't told as far as getting the permit that um, anything to do with, I was just told specific items to help the homeowners. And one was the plan. And I understand exactly what that is because when we had a landscaper come out and to the left of the driveway, driving pavement, right where that yeah. white where all the thing is, markets, yeah. a little bit down, there is part of the drainage system. Just no, just a tiny bit on the original that's, plan. That's not what she's talking about. Right, those pavers to the left yeah. are gonna be taken up yeah. by the landscaper because right. those are where, if you look on the plan of the- There's a um, lot of planting. It's planting. a rhododendrons. Yeah. So, so what happened was the owners had put those in because when they back out of the driveway, it was driving into the mud. So that those can be removed because I, what we did was we got a landscaper to submit a plan, what the town wanted, with exactly how much it would cost to comply with all of those 
every single bush and shrub that was on the plan. And the trees on the left that you were pointing out between the neighbor's house are still there. Okay. And the, the trees that have gone up in the front of the house are actually the right type of tree, but they were all planted in a straight line. So the, the estimate that we got from Anza Landscaping, and we brought it to the town, and they told us that was exactly what they were looking for, that things that could be done in the spring. I asked about the far end of the property, which is back toward the wetlands, and the homeowners had said that they had bought some of those shrubs that had already been conservation told me the same thing. But because there hadn't been an inspection, so the town hadn't been out and exactly said, how much they put in. The landscaper went back there too, and what he could see before it snowed was there were some of those plants put in. So he did the estimate for the entire everything. Because even though they put in some of the shrubs on the front of the property, they might have to be moved to stagger. As you can see, they weren't a straight line as the person put them in. So and the landscaping gave an, an estimate that would include everything, even if they've already put something in, because this would be to get a bond through the town so that it could be installed in the spring. So it might not be that they need to do that. And some of the ones in the front can be moved and staggered. So everything is included. And then they'll be able to take up those permeable Can I ask papers. a question? So have we been given a brand new landscaping plan to review? I mean, that's what it's sounding like. No, it's an or estimate taken, to do this. Or have you taken this plan it's with the sizes and everything else. That's, that's what you look at. Is that what they've done? Yes. So the same sizes, the same locations, the same variation, Species. all of that. And it, even Species. if they already, they did put some in, he's, he's still adding, saying he might have to move some of those, but he doesn't know what's out back. So he is, that included, the plan? is that the plan there? This is your plan that we enlarged because we couldn't see okay. it. It was so small. Yeah. But the, the landscaper went out and we were told even by conservation I went to the conservation meeting regarding the patio and that was approved it was slightly bigger than what had been approved but not as big as originally and the conservation approved the patio as it is built now and Which when I talked to that. yes um, the conserva conservation meeting was last week and they approved the patio plan as it's built now what do you as mean it's built now is not as like that right Right. So, what does it look like now? It was we need to know what that is. There needs to be a plan that shows exactly what's going to be built, what is built, what has been built. What's going to change? If, if yeah, the plans and what's built have to be the same, this is not an optional plan. Everything has to be installed exactly as shown on this plan. If it's not, <coughs> the changes made to it. We need to approve it first. And that's what I told them. <coughs> so the landscaping estimate is for, for exactly everything there. They might have already put some of the some of the shrubs in, but well, we don't the know. Can we, see that document? Document? can we see that document? The that estimate, plan? we gave it to the town. We, we, have, we were supposed to have it in last week. Okay, I'm sorry. The landscaping is not the same thing as the Harris pavement. Okay, right. right. You started right. with and so started That was a different so policy. If, if the, patio is not exactly like that today, then we need to see what it is and either approve the way it is today or it needs to be changed back to that. CONCOM so, doesn't do site plan approval. But I don't know what they signed off on, but it's yeah. not site plan approval. Right. So, what, so what you're looking for, I'm just going to interject here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, so what you're looking for is a landscaping plan to be exactly like what's there right now, which it sounds like yeah, what, what's, what's and actually you're looking for an as-built yeah. plan for what's existing right now Absolutely. compared to what, and, it, what was right. approved. And right. that's what ANSA gave, and we gave it last week. No, they're looking okay. at an as-built plan that needs to be done by a survey. So yeah, we have the as-built plan that's done by the surveyor. We do. Mm -hmm. this, no? If the as -built that's, that's not this, though. No, that's the, that's the proposed right. landscaping so what, plan. What, do we have that on the, on the computer? We can look yeah, at it. Yeah, But again, if the as-built plan doesn't agree with that plan, have then we, we need to over? approve all the changes or not. I don't see any landscaping on that. Yeah, yeah, we don't have one where they're merged together. Okay. That's what's missing. Because this one still sh shows the gravel um, um, per permeable paving over there. Yeah, this is more recent than the last couple of So this is after they put in the yeah. permeable. Yeah, but they're taking that out. No, I understand that. 
Well, but we, that's that's what Steve is talking about. We, we're, we're looking at we're not looking at the, a definitive drawing that shows what bring is everything up to speed on both, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, This clearly shows a different patio configuration with a fire pit. Yeah, it's got a big fire pit. It's not what we approved. Um, so again, we either need to approve it ways now, or it's going to have to be changed back to what we approved. But we're not we're we're not at a point where we're approving a right. drawing. It's it's That's this correct. is this is sort of what they what they've done, but it's not what's going to be done when the dust settles. Right. Because that per, the, that's permeable paving that supposedly disappears, and, and, right. and planning goes in there, uh, for example. And the, and I notice in the, one of the photographs, I don't know if the fence has been installed yet or not. It hasn't. No. Is that is why? The fence? Yeah. Hasn't why? been approved yet. It hasn't You're been asking approved. You for the it hasn't been approved. Well, okay, but yeah. we haven't seen a submittal on it. Where is the submittal of the fence? It's on the plan. Which plan? We have an email. Which plan? Oh, oh. This plan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's a blue line. I'm just going to be our hands. I'm showing you the state that it is currently yeah, right. But so we're letting you know what's missing so we can make a decision. They did provide us a submittal of peasants. We can bring it up. Can you I bring it up? That would be great. Yeah. That might be possible. Is, is this the original plan Sue was asking? No. Yeah, so the original plan versus what's there today it would be side. very helpful. And then we have to decide what's the original what plan. What's the original plan. Well, you say what's there today. No, that isn't what's that is in what's okay. okay. Right. Yeah, it's not a suggestion. Show the fire pit. So are you taking the fire pit out, 
or is this incomplete? It's just no. So that so the homeowner did send over a plan that shows the difference in square footage. But that's not what we're looking at we still. So there's okay. another can plan. We get, can we we actually get a submittal a plan submittal that shows what's going to be there when the dust settles? Yeah. Can we do that? Exactly yeah. what's going to be what's there. What's going to be there? And we have to compare it with not with this plan, but with the original plan we approved. Original. Right. And then we have to decide which of these changes. Which elements we're going to sign off. Right. Okay. It's not maybe all of them, maybe not. I don't know. So these are the two plans that can show exactly the difference. And but the landscaping that we had the estimate done, which I was told. Are you hearing us? Right. We're, we're saying. We, I think these we were need. submitted before ahead of time. Yeah, but we need a coordinated. We don't need five drawings. We need a coordinated drawing that shows everything that's being proposed, including what's been built, and we need to compare it with what we <laughs> signed off on before. It's not, that, that coordinated drawing, and we have to sign off on all of the items mm -hmm. that, are, that, that are different from what we originally signed off on. And I understand. On. But when I went to the town to help the family, I was given three things to do. One and two were done, because I met with the town last week, and I said they did the stormwater, they complied with the lights that I knew had to be replaced, and number three was the landscaping estimate. And we included absolutely every single tree and shrub that had to be put in, even if they'd already put some in, because it hadn't been inspected. That's what I was told. Well, we're saying done. the same things over and over. Right. You, you said that. We didn't that know anything about the fact that there's more right. that has to be done. I was told that the patio okay. was not an issue for tonight. But they have well, submitted this plan. I never said that. I never said the patio was not an issue for tonight. I was just, I asked for the three things that we had to do. That's and what we need to do to be Yeah, the stormwater is part of the patio. That's the order of the night. We ask the questions okay. and we see what works and what doesn't work. And right now, we don't have the right information to make any determination. So was the stormwater plan including the patio? Yeah. Oh, that's so that's what the stormwater, that's what it should include because it was more hard. So the stormwater plan, what we need is a consolidated plan. The stormwater plan was submitted. We need a consolidated plan which shows what going to be, look like when, when, when it's finished. With the, with the landscaping. When she says plan, she's three times. Right. But is this song. not being built? Because it's not shown on that plan you just gave us. This. Is this not being built anymore? I think that was created just to show the patio. Okay. But the yeah. stormwater plan was submitted by someone else in the town. <coughs> it was. Yeah. All right. You know, I, I think it's pretty clear what needs to be done. You need to have a plan that shows what's already there and what's going to be there if it's not already there, including you know every stuff. single shrub, every single, every single, every single water, everything that's shown on this plan. But but one again that is what's proposed and what's already there, and then we will compare that to what we approved way back when, which is not this plan, and decide which of those changes we can live with. Which may be all of them, I don't know. So there's no change because the estimate we gave, the only thing would be the patio. The estimate that we gave from the landscaping company included everything on the original plan that you approved. It, but but we need a plan. We don't have a plan that shows. Well, I think he, he did his estimate by the original complete. plan. Okay, what, what needs to be done? The patio isn't shown right. The levers aren't shown right. Um, it just it's not it's not it's not what you're they're proposing to do. They were going to do exactly that. Are they going to but they did the neighbors. But they did. Are they going to take the fire pit out? No, because well, this isn't this is right. hundred percent. We're asking. It would be if they had to. Well, there are probably other things. That no, a lot of things. There are other there are other Was issues there anything as well. Else? Like well, what is. What's all this? Said, is that coming this out? This isn't shown at the, on the latest plan that we just saw a slide of a few minutes ago. None of this is shown on that plan. Right. Are, are you no longer proposing that? Floor, it's different from this plan. So, like, the uh, extended driveway isn't shown. Like, the park is not shown on this one. We want to match up the other one. And they want that. Mm -hmm. Whatever is planted, have a plan for that. Yeah, so whatever is like basically planted. Wait a minute, don't do that. They want to see what's already planted. That's going to need to be planted. Wait, hold on, Dave. You're off base. Don't do that.
Okay, this is a meeting. You're not talking with the, with the applicants. Oh, sure. I don't know. But this is, there's a process in this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You 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 talk to the you talk to us and ask us if you have permission to talk to the, to the applicants. Okay. I was just trying to explain it. Yeah, I know what you're trying no, to yeah, do. Sorry, sorry. Um, we, we, we're just, I think we've beaten this horse to death. We all agree, yeah. every one of us on the planning board know, we've, we've explained it about five times. We know what we need to do. We're gonna continue until we get what we need to see. Okay? And, we, and, we, and if you don't understand what that is, look at the tape. Okay? So we'll continue to one day. Um. I think honestly, this has to go out at least till March 20th. Fine. We'll continue to March 20th. Okay. There's missing communication here. The board knows what we need to see. I don't know where the disconnect could you, is. Could you put that in my Look at the video. We, we explained it five times. Or asking my, right. or asking my, right. very simple. I, I did, and it was very simple. I was told oh. that we needed an so, estimate. Then you can blame me. It wasn't enough. I thought you could get that it was to do. Mm -hmm. It's been a long process working with you folks to get the right information out. It's been more than a month of getting to get to the right information out. It's not enough. We'll get the right information out. Okay, and it won't be back here until we get to, to that point. And I did bring it down ahead of time. Yeah, I, yeah, we appreciate I, I, what you're I, trying we, to do. We it's just you're not earnest. Earnest. Okay. Yeah. It's just, as I said, there's a mis there's a miscommunication here. Um, we have to go through a process where we look at it rationally, not in bits and pieces. Compare what was originally approved with totally a coordinated drawing with what changes are going to happen when the dust settles and sign off on those on those exact changes. And it needs to be a record drawing that, that exactly shows what's going to be there at the end of the day. Those drawings are legal documents. And that's the one that I got from the town. Okay. So that's the one we're going with. That This is the plan that was submitted. Would, would, would you have Just somebody a bunch of notes and say, in here is a legal document, it's really all in here somewhere, or would you ask for a full organized report, a legal document, which says, this is the premise, this is what we did, this is why we did it, and this is where we end up. That's all we're asking for in graphic form. Okay. Good. Okay. So but that next we'll meeting, I'll have a decision just yeah. for Wellesley. Okay, good. And then yeah. Leslie and I are going to go look at that tree. Right. And I also want to do the talk about the fence for a minute and the, and the hen's teeth. I guess that's the Wellesley tree. One. That's the Wellesley tree one. If you want to talk about it, I'll leave that to you. If you want to talk about it now or if you want to talk about it. I don't but know. It's Even something you, I don't know. Let me just say that what we agreed to at the last meeting. Okay, I watched. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, one of our conditions is going to be that. that uh, our decision is subject to signing off on whatever the, the configuration of the gate and opening is. Right, and I just wanted to, and I, because I, I, whatever Tony drew, you couldn't see on video, so I just wanted to, you know, ask a question, and this goes back to that scribble I did. Yeah. I don't know if we have, 
coming, when you go look at the tree, are you also going to measure the distance between the tree and the road? Yes. Is yes. this the tree that we're thinking? Yeah. The you thought you could navigate around. I wasn't around. I was going to Attaboy. Right. You know. right. Well, no, you, maybe you should explain Steve Fogg's email, because it's, it's not just that, it's just not just that one tree. They, they're also, why, why don't you explain what you got? So they also the get, they're also looking to get an arborist report. Good. Just oh, all the trees. For all the affected trees. So that's all three of them. Right. Including the pine tree. Including the pine, the including pine. the large double pine, yeah. including the, the smaller double pine, and the oak tree. Right. Yeah. Right. I'd like to say the Not oak tree. Not just the oak tree. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Good. I just wanted yeah. everybody to be clear on that. Okay. Well, I think Tony's talking about just measuring the distance because no one did a tape measure when we did right. it. Right, from the yeah. oak tree Between to the, the Exactly. Right. See what you really have. Yeah. So the actual dimensions. Yeah. yeah. I mean, here it is if you want to look at it. Yeah. No vertical code, 40 mile an hour speed limit, and they've requested an arborist to certify the condition of the trees in question. So that's what they want to look at in the future. Right. So, so we can look at Wellesley. We'll look at just the Wellesley decision at the next meeting. Okay. Defer the rest of this. Yes. Is it really worth separating this into two decisions rather than waiting, you know, till the meeting after that the will, next meeting? I mean, it seems kind of yeah, silly. Well, yeah. um, <coughs> was there a rush to do the construction work on this? It's, it's it was. Work. That was what um, Concom had expressed to me that they would, if they, they can, they moving? would like, they would like to get moving on the legacy trail part of it, and have, they were going to put out separate bids for that. Part. Okay, so they want so to send out bids. Yes. So when we talk about the Wellesley Street uh, opening, mm -hmm. I, I think the proper time to do that would be to, to talk mm -hmm. about your thoughts mm -hmm. on what that configuration looks like. Yes. Is when we look at the decision. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, I assume someone will be here uh, on behalf of the of the uh, Legacy Trail people to, that we can talk to. If we're going to talk about the yes, then I'll. The other question is, to be here. is if you've been able to, by a miracle, get a hold of Chief Soares to set something up, or is that there? Oh, and it's, it's well, he's already agreed, agreed to 16 feet. feet. He has agreed to yes. so ah, that. Excellent. Yeah. I did attach that to the park. Yeah, no, no. That's okay. 16 feet is great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was yeah. the mitigating factor that produced it from 18 to 16? Um, he said he would. He wanted it to be 18, but in the interest of keeping the project moving, he'll work with 16. Okay, gotcha. Did you try 14? No. You're talk okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And it's a really extensive It's this email and what what Sue is looking at is all of these other preceding emails before Steve asked to defer. Okay. That's there's lots of things, there's lots of things here. Who 
Who's questioning? The project engineers. As far as our request or other people's request? So, no, not a, as far as far as this design, okay. basically, like possibility of moving the oh okay. sidewalk behind the old tree. They're they're they're, they're doing the okay. They're, I mean, one thing is that we talked about on the site walk was the way they're dealing with that culvert, that path over yeah, the culvert. Yeah, I remember you talked about that, yeah. Right, and how they're dealing with like the regular DPW, where you see it's, uh, you know, a metal pipe sticking out. Mm -hmm. And I asked, at high powered streets, DPT, however it goes, the gentleman Mike, don't they have a better looking detail for that? Mm -hmm. And he said he was going to come up with one. He said, probably. What they said to us at the meeting was yeah. that it's now going to be a series of, it's not just one bit, one culvert, it's going to be a series of smaller pipes, if, if we're talking about the same thing. I think where, we're, where the, where the pack behind the stone wall, yeah. they've done that swale. Swale, by the way, has a has horrible, it looked, swale is not attractive. No? No, and it has netting on it, and I think it could be bettered. And the culvert that was described to me, and I thought I heard on the tape, was that it was going to be, whether it's a series of pipes or metal pipes, it's going to see metal pipes, and it's going to be more practical than it is aesthetic. And we've had the discussion, can we come up with a detail that you know, use some kind of a stone to hide the pipes, or something that will work appealing. And I don't okay. know where that went. And I think the, the project engineer's name is Mike? Steve. Steve, sorry, there he goes. Um, he said he would look and, and see what they had because they have, they have had projects where they have to do this. Mm -hmm. so, he, didn't, I, he didn't present anything. No, he didn't. Specific and that, to that. I know, and I, I was, you know, I, unfortunately I wasn't here. I couldn't jog his memory. Seventy-five percent is interesting. If you can't make seventy-five percent, are you going to make fifty, or are you going to make ten? No, in this case, and what we usually, what we wrote into the standard is that we, you would do it then at the limit of work, similar to what we said at the Concord Rail Trail parking. So we just you know what would be interesting that. is they're hiring an arborist to look at the trees that they're considering taking down. Mm -hmm. If they would have the arborist look at those trees where they can't avoid the critical root zone, that would be interesting. And see what, you and see what they say about what's the risk of those trees of mm -hmm. construction so close to them and non protection So if it's, as long as the arborist is there, say, hey, there are three more trees to look at. Yeah. yeah. Use their expertise. That'll save another month, right, of us asking them to go back and take a look at those trees that are at risk. I mean, it is a nature trail, is that right? And nature has trees. It would be nice to keep the trees. Mow down all the trees to create the trail. Well, a lot of this is CYA stuff. Well, yeah, I'm sure it is, but... But he's doing it ahead of time, which means it will work. Because 
this way they have a disclaimer. They can say, we told you we couldn't do it, and we're not going to do it. And since the terms are vague, Well, so we be, there are several issues here. For, as I understand it, we, we were down to two trees. We were down to the oak tree and we were down to the, to the white pine tree. And so we're only talking about one tree. As we, we said, we were okay with removing the oak tree, although not everybody thought that was the greatest decision in the world. Yeah, so I don't, I, I don't know why we're getting, you know, I, we, I don't think we should get overly anxious about, about one tree. I don't. But, you know, it, it's, it, I, I know that Mitch is making a big deal out of it, but it's, it's a tree. Can I come no, back? Alan, I don't think it's tree. one tree. I think yeah. this goes back to the whole project. They're now reneging on a lot of the standards planning for put together on the whole project. The other trees now. It's all the other trees that we thought were safe. Are going to be handled in an intelligent, thoughtful manner. What other trees? I thought we were wherever the path was going. What we looked at was just two trees. If it's not in the right of way, we have no jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But the trees which we do have in the right of way, there are other ones which they're missing, which we said we they could miss. Now they would say, wait, we're not sure we can. Well, that's not what they said at the presentation. But what they said that the presentation. That line says. No, I know, but that's not what they said at the presentation. Right, so the question so is... So something. Out. Yeah, that's what she's pointing out, that there's all this back, back room stuff. But this, that is, we're, that we're, this doesn't have to do with the planning board's conditions. When they made the presentation last week, it was down to... They, everything looked fine, at least that's what they presented to us, except there were two trees that were in question, that oak tree and the pine tree. Yeah, but we're saying there are other trees in our jurisdiction where they never the other only other trees yeah. I'm aware of were trees that were not in good shape and we said okay those could go. Okay. Well, we talk, we did talk about ones working their way. We'll go to this side of this tree, that side of that tree. Right. So my question to them, and I'll just ask, given this email, are any of the trees in the right way exactly. the Phoenix Road <coughs> not going to comply with the requirements of the planning board? Seventy five percent, you know. And the this and, the, and, the, and the, all the roof digging. Cool. Tell us. Clarification. I mean, yeah. by, by putting us on this thread, we're nervous. When we looked at the at the layout, the side the the, walk, the sidewalk layout, the, the only two trees that were that, that, oh. that were close to the pavement, to the walkway pavement, were the two we discussed. So, think, well, let's well, well, look at. Are we we'll looking now we'll at a whole bunch of we'll trees that we didn't? We'll go walk. Well, That's great. Why are we getting clarification on? Why are they mentioning this whole issue? I don't know. Well, there, there is one at least right confused. here that I know we brought up. Yeah, there where, were a couple. crossing ones. There was yeah. a big. That one was. Gonna, that one was. They, they, they told us. They can they can save that tree. Yeah, exactly. they can they, they can tell visit. us they can save that right. tree. Yeah, right. we didn't tell them. No, we didn't tell them right. to save this one. This one they said they missed. But this is an example of one where we do want the negative. protection around it. Right. They're not going to be able to do seventy five percent, and I think we all understood that that it was going to be close. Right. But they would do the other measures, such as air spading Fading and, and everything doing, the, else. doing right. you know the clean cuts on the and roof. My request is for them to have an arborist look at. Right, and establish a level. Have a level of confidence right. that that tree can be safe with their plants now. Mm -hmm. So I have to assume that's what the arborist is going to do. No, no, the arborist wasn't going to look at. The arborist is going to look at the conditions of the trees Oops. that were under debate. But two trees. Yeah. He's, that was his, That's going to be his job. And by the way, typically arborists, if you ask them, and should we take this tree down or not? Ninety-nine percent of the time, they say it's fine to take the tree down. Right. Yeah, it's also fine to leave it up too. They don't want to be held liable. That's right. It's no, all about no. CYA. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Right. Yes, yeah. Okay. I just. I don't. Seems to be too can't you want I don't know why, <laughs> why are we so anxious? I, I just don't. Uh, it, uh, We're anxious.
just because they brought up a concern that yeah. there were trees that yeah, they said were going to be protected that are not going to be protected. Okay. Yeah. That's right. what I think. Tony and Leslie have volunteered. Yeah. Yeah, we'll walk it and we'll right. graciously right. volunteer sure. to yeah. take a look. So right. Let's go from there. It's going to be the okay. best. You'd be the planning board mascot. Okay. <laughs> and then we have 235 Wellesley Street special permit day camp. Yep, yeah. just the day camp. This is the decision. Yep. I move. Oh, you can come here. I move yet. I move it to be afraid to go clear our cars off the bus. Yeah, right. Is it a frozen out there? No, I just said it's freezing rain. It was freezing rain when I walked in. We don't know. It was starting when I walked in. I was wondering, like, how the. Jeez, I think the parking lot. Even for you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the police can give us a ride home and pick up our car right tomorrow. Yeah, that's, it. that's what we're looking. When is the comments on the annual report back? Is it too late? No, we'll, we'll do it tonight. Okay. That's what I wanted to do. Because tonight. basically, my my term ended ended last two years ago. I thought that was great. Oh. <laughs> Did I not? Yes. I thought it was, I wasn't going to correct it. was 2013 instead of 23. Uh, okay. If wishes were horses, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> these are all state, oh, these are all standard conditions. Those are all standard yeah. conditions. The only one that changes in this one is the two-year term instead of three. Okay. Yeah. Because they, he announced his plans to right. grow the camp. Right. So even these CCs are standard conditions? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, when we do the camps, because they're such shorter things, we don't really have special conditions for the camps. We just do a set of, like, I think it's like eight or so okay. standard conditions. Do we get some flexibility to move up from 30 or? Definitely. Yep. <laughs> we did know your 30 um, so campers, yeah. If they, when they have to come back to us, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, greater than 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this, this really great coding. Yeah. Sounds like fun. I wanted to go. I think it's in by. Who's stopping you? I needed a job. Hey, did you see that oh. David Ortiz is speaking in Beaches? Somebody, I heard somebody yeah. say that today. Everything's happening in Beaches. Okay, guys. All right, done. So, so odd wording there at number seven. This is so a, an this increase case has almost no impact greater. So okay. Increase. Great way. Oh, right. Eight. Right. Stop. <laughs> Tony has come. Sure. <laughs> Page six, number seven. It's odd wording. Of an increase in by greater than one hundred percent. Of an increase in campers. Yeah, they were missing a word there. Increase. Okay, in campers. Yeah, great. Right. Just a minute. Is she trying to yeah. move to her? Yeah, 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 yeah. And how warm is it He's, where you are? Yeah. No, no. Very nice. She's cruel. She's not angry. No, I say. That's kind of the only variable in the whole thing. Isn't it? What's that? The, that little that line, yeah. Yeah. Two years. Everything else is pretty scary. And we're, oh, this is the two years we were talking about. Right. Right. Initial period of two years. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah. That's that's yeah. easy enough to 
change that. Squares, squares, make them squares. Ultimately. <laughs> that's the old the green visual gauge alternative. The hyphen? The green gauge of the hyphen? Where are we looking, sir? Affordable housing. Either way. Okay. It can be either be hyphenated or not. In the second paragraph, there's an ask why it's lonely. In September, maybe the Second paragraph on which page, sir? Uh, there is no page number. One, sure. two, this one. Affordable housing. Okay. Under affordable housing, the second paragraph is missing. Oh, it's a number eight. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, it should be eight. And then um, in the third paragraph, has engaged two util, has engaged util, no two. Okay. You know, I usually see it as R O. Really? Yeah, it's either way. You say when you like you see Foxborough. Yeah. The no. older signs have it as O U G H, and then the newer signs are R O. people remember it as G H. Yeah. Everybody else just drops it. Don't want to deal with it. Dan, you worked in Foxborough. Which is it? Well, I think it goes either way. Honestly. So, I think we did O R O more often than not. Than not. I think it's easier to simple. not all done electronically, but instead of having to come in and pick up a piece of paper from from the plant, um, from the counter, fill that out by hand, those forms are now online. There's a field where you have to fill where you can type in everything on the on the application so you can type in applicant property and all okay. of that. Then that gets printed and comes in. Yeah. Yeah, well, they used to use a sign to bring in, and they have to bring in checks anyway. And so okay. Oh, all right. Oh, so that's really great. So, so you don't have to deal with legible handwriting? Yes. <laughs> How nice is that? Well, that's good. Tell me and stuff. Tell me and stuff. I thought you 
Yeah. A zoning bylaw amendment. Yeah. A zoning bylaw amendment. Article 20. Is it possible to raise the thing up so we could keep reading? That's perfect. to 20 or do they have the other lot? What? For 18 skating pond, does that back up to Route 20 or is it, it there's a lot that... There's a separate lot. Yeah, so we don't have to move on this floor, right? No, you don't have to move on it. No, it's just a, yeah. This is just, you know, review for consistency yeah, okay. and guiding what you guys want to get in for the... Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it, it looks, looks great. really good. Okay. one direction around okay. basically clockwise first parking lot okay. park okay. over there because that's where the new fields are going at 815 at 815 okay. yes yeah, so we okay. missed the pick up and drop off traffic okay. yes you did tell me yeah. yeah on february 19th we have another site visit at five as five colchester what i want to point out is five colchester doesn't exist as an address yet that's the one we just assigned it yet so if you look online for it it's not there it's the corner of colchester and conant okay. street it's, it was zero it was zero conant yeah um, and then the following week after that, 146 Conant site visit, so that's just a block up from there. Okay. Um, and then our regular meeting is February 27th. Um, an update on Metro Common here, um, again, that's the MAPC's long, regional long range plan. The next listening session on February 28th is going to be, you, you can drop in any time between 3 to 8, it's a Prairie Man City Hall. This is the one that's specially designated for Metro West, for our region, for our sub-region. Um, 
what is our what is our listening set? That's basically they do all sorts of um, they take input in a bunch of ways. Like one of them is this thing that I put up here is you can kind of give your vision for the year 2050. If you want to fill those out and, and give them to me, I'll take them to that listening okay. session. I'm going to go to that. So you can give them to me. Uh, like this is transportation based, or this is. It's, it is land use based, it is um, economic development based, it is all the things okay. yeah, that, there, that they cover. So this is the Public state health. listening to the communities, is, that, is yes. that where the listening comes in? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And this includes things like, is this also vulnerability because that's what the sustainable committee is yeah. dealing with? Vulnerability, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that's the other thing, you know, if, take that tell that. other committees <laughs> about, okay. if they're yeah. interested to, about this okay. event. Okay, we'll do. So, um, Following up on what Tony and I were working on with traffic planning, we've um, we put up this this that is taking a long time to load, but we've started a little blog discussion on. Uh, anyway, just take my word for it. We put it out there. <laughs> um, this is something really I wanted to to share with you folks. Uh, as part of the Metro Commons, they do have a speaker series, so they bring in various, you know, planning thinkers, experts from around the country. This fellow, Richard Rothstein, wrote this book, The Color of Law, and it is about, um, and I did buy his book there, I do think it was really good and worthwhile, so if anybody wants to read it, I have it. Um, it is about basically how racial segregation has been encouraged and, and continues throughout um, basically through today, and, and it was in a large way a more intentional act than we think. Um, it's, it's a challenging way to think about our, our land use. I mean, if you can, please do look at some of these interviews or, or read the book. I think it's, it's, worth, it's very worthwhile. Um, some of the things we have upcoming for the legislature, um, Phil Saunders has asked that we again support the Public Lands Preservation Act. and. Uh, we did support this last year, District Local Technical Assistance Funding. That is money that MAPC gets to do technical assistance projects for various towns right now. That funding is funding our water master plan um, usage analysis. Mm -hmm. So we probably want to support that again. When, uh, when Tony asked, not facetiously, are there safe routes for trains? Is there any way we can put some kind of a bug in somebody's ear that yes. helps? Yes. Some of the, the logarithms you guys are talking yes, about. Yes, we can. So, a few inputs on that is, you know, Metro Common is one we want to we want to put that kind of transportation in there. Um, Destination 2040 is the MPO's regional plan. Um, that's their long range plan. We want to put that in there. Um, Senator Spilka is forming herself a transportation committee um, that she wants to head up in this session of the legislature. That, as we talked about, you know, one of the things Tony and I brought up is there's a lot of these diverse plans. Mm -hmm. That's a good place where I think that somebody could kind of centralize those because it is at the Senate lawmaker funding level that they could take up that role. And yes, I think that should be brought up there as well, too. Um, does, that, does that mean it goes on your long, long, long list? Mm -hmm. It goes on the, that goes on the, um, neighborhood um, ongoing projects and permits, 751, 761 Boston Post Road, that 40B. We did receive the notice of intent to convert off of the 61A lands. So that means that they've, they've taken one more official step to, to actually selling that property. Um, we don't have to comment on it, but we should note that we received it here. Um, we usually the only time we would comment if we said, you know, try and buy that land. Mm -hmm. or that. Selectmen are going to review this on the 12th. Okay. When are we going to see the project? The proposed project. The proposed project. Um, well, there is no proposed. Yeah, there is no proposed is no project, project as of yet, and I'm trying to remember where. It's not in a project. Today. Yeah, we did. not The last thing we laid out the timeline was that they were going to do that, and then. Um, and once that they got past this point, then they would finalize their PNS, and then we would start seeing it. That's where I remember it being left. But we did not have a definite date when we it, it left. Definitely months away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 
Um, Boston Properties, we're going to be doing neighborhood meetings um, next week on the 11th will be our first one. The following ones will be probably after school break. Um, 518 South Avenue, this is, this is a new proposal that has just been presented publicly to the Affordable Housing Trust. It, it, it is going in as a 40B, as a rental. The number he mentioned there was 200, 250 to 275 units. It is, that's, how many, yeah. how many acres? 10. 10 acres, half of the So it's on, on about four acres. Yeah. Is it mostly wetlands? Is that half of it is wetlands. It's, it's sort of new. It's, so, yeah. And who's know, doing this? Early. Yeah. Um, it's Jonathan Buckman owns it. And his partner, um, he's he's partnered with a large developer. And Jonathan Buckman just bought it, or was he always owned it? No, he just bought it. Is is access to it and traffic as much of an issue as seven hundred fifty one? So it's, it's, it's on Route Thirty, so it, it's close to Wilson Street. Yeah, Wilson Street intersection. Yeah. Wow. It's going to be really? a good deal. Yeah, and his access is it's family housing, so. We're looking at at least 1.5, maybe 1.75 cars per unit. And there's individual houses or townhouses? It's got to be a house. It's got to be, it's gotta be, it's gotta be like a big apartment block. No, that's why I'm wondering. It's a building. It's going to be three yeah. stories? But it, oh, it's, I, I guess it's closer to six or seven. They were saying four, but it's hard. Do you think four, they're open to, I don't, do you think they're open to building fewer? We have because maybe with a combination of Boston properties, 751, 761, and 518. We haven't seen it. We don't, you know, We're not we them all to be smaller. Yeah. yeah. Well, we that need would to be get cool. a comprehensive permit. Spread it around. Yeah. And fair mm -hmm. I mean, Yeah. What we're looking well, at, what we're looking yeah. at now yeah. is some, somewhere between 750 and 800 affordable housing yeah. units. Uh, under consideration. But in order to, in order to... That's, that's, the, that's the reality right there. Yeah. Well, way too much, but if we can get them to reduce their... Well, what you need to do is get a comprehensive permit in place, because at that point, we have a two-year IAS. Yeah. And then so the rest of it's built, and then that's it. Let's look at the second floor. Yeah. yeah. So that, that makes... This, pro this, is, this property, this project is closest getting a comp permit. They submitted for a comp permit that are already before the ZBA. With that wow. no, can, we, yes, it would. can we, is the ZBA um, expediting this? We don't know yet. I think maybe we can, can we uh, request I mean, one it, committee to another? We can request, I mean, I think it's a larger town-wide discussion to have that you know, it's yeah, we. Right. You know, obviously, I think we want to endorse that. We see we see the issue. Mm -hmm. You know, but it has to come. You know, right. selectmen. I believe they see the issue too. Okay. But you know, they have to say it too. There are yes. pieces attached to it. Yeah. Oh, we are. Yeah. It's not just the forty covers. Multiple moving parts there. Yeah. 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 Um, Goldberg moving parts. Yeah. It is. Um, yeah. yeah, we we've an onslaught has come has come just now, and we have to we have to find our best way to manage this. Okay. And that's that's going to be a challenge. Okay. Over here. It's not like we didn't think this would happen. <laughs> well, actually, okay. um, we heard from the rail show. If there's any other committee updates that we want that anyone has to give, town center plans are being bid. Um, I saw you guys forwarded my memo. We did? Yeah. Um, it wasn't meant for that, but okay, so okay. it goes. Um, my real concern is the irrigation system and the town well and all of that. I mean, they have both the comment in there which says, water everything from a truck. And then they have 430 pages of this type of the irrigation system. And if they, if they do an irrigation system, they don't have a well. So I'm hoping they're going to water by the truck and not do the irrigation system. But if they are doing an irrigation system, they're going to do a well. They have to do a well, and the memo doesn't deal with that. 
What did he say? He said it was going to hook up the NWR. Well, we didn't care for that. So that's why that was a memo to us versus versus okay. TPC committee. This is our recommendation, request, whatever the right word is. That we get. So I don't know. Has that gone to Steve Laurent? Yes. And have we received anything back? I mean, when did it go to? Um, basically, two weeks, weeks ago, ago now. Yeah, can, roughly you, week. can you reach out to him and see what the status of that is? Because yeah. I think the real concern is that is that one right there. You know that you know, it's either it, it should be either a well or we also said they don't need it, and they agreed they didn't need it, and they have wording and they're saying. They need it, well, this so. ties back to two two committees: the, the sustainability committee. Right, yeah. but they're just they're still you're right. But they're also you have to remember they're pretty fledgling. Yeah, no, I understand, but okay. and the other one is the, the water policy. Who's water policy? Huh? Exactly. So there, that's mm -hmm. selected, I think. So there's a. This is a. Well, this also, on, I, I this think it's why it's work on it from the yeah. water policy side. And it's also money saving too. Mm -hmm. It's not a very good example. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's exactly yeah. what it says. We formed this giant committee. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd agree with you. Ready. I'd like to see them run it off a wall. So I think we need. I think we need to ask Steve to. Let us know where it's going and, and do something with it. Yeah, let's get a reporter asking him those questions. I can't imagine it would be that difficult because after all, this country is actually a stream. It's, it's, it's really? It's, a, yes, it's an underground stream. Yeah. What? Is the town green water? No. No, it's not It's not watered, but... It's pretty wet. It yeah. was a stream. It's always soaking, yeah. Yes. Yeah. doesn't need to be. There must be water right, at there's... some point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the drains, if it goes somewhere. Yeah. <coughs> that's what, yeah, that's what I'll say. By the way, sustainability is chasing a number of different um, uh, grants right now, and uh, it's going to be reaching out to different departments and different committees. So, okay, so when we schedule, those, yep. we'll schedule something yep. for them too. Okay. All right, that's it. That is it for. Oh, thank you. I move that we adjourn. Okay. okay.